The Vedas. Chatvaraha. Four. Udritaha. Made into separate parts. Itihasa. Historical records. Mahabharata. Puranamcha. And the Puranas. Vedaha, the original source of knowledge. Uchyate is said to be. Translation by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The four divisions of the original sources of knowledge, the Vedas, were made separately. But the historical facts and authentic stories mentioned in the Puranas are called the fifth Veda. Translation with repetition. The four divisions of the original sources of knowledge, the Vedas, were made separately. But the historical facts and the authentic stories mentioned in the Puranas are called the fifth Veda. The other few verses I'll just read for myself. This does not have a purport. Tatra Veda Dharaha Pailaha Samogo Jaimini Kavihi Vaisampayana Evaiko Nishnato Yajusam Uta Tatra thereupon Rig Veda Dharaha, the professor of Rig Veda Pailaha, the Rishi named Paila Samagaha, that of the Sama Veda Jaiminihi, the Rishi named Jaimini Kavihi, highly qualified Vaisampayanaha, the Rishi named Vaisampayana, Eva only, Ekaha alone, Nishnataha, well versed, Yajusham of the Yajur Veda, Uta glorified. Translation After the Vedas were divided into four divisions, Paila Rishi became the professor of the Rig Veda, Jaimini the professor of the Sama Veda, and Vaisampayana alone became glorified by the Yajur Veda. Purport. The different Vedas were entrusted to different learned scholars for development in various ways. Text 22. Atharva Angi Rasam Asit Sumantur Daruno Munihi Itihasa Purananam Pitame Roma Harshanaha Atharva, the Atharva Veda, Angira Sam, unto the Rishi Angira, Asit, was entrusted. Sumantuhu, also known as Sumantu Muni, Darunaha, seriously devoted to the Atharva Veda, Munihi, the sage, Itihasa Purananam, of the historical records like the Puranas, Pita, father, me, mine, Roma Harshana, the Rishi Roma Harshana. Translation. The Suman to Muni Angira, who was very devotedly engaged, was interested with the Atharva Veda. And my father, Roma Harshana, was interested with the Puranas and historical records. Purport. In the Shruti Mantras, also it is stated that Angira Muni, who strictly followed the rigid principles of the Atharva Vedas, was a leader of the followers of the Atharva Vedas. Text 23. Ta eta rishayo vedam swam swam vyasayan anekadha shishyai prashishyas tachishyair vedas te shakhi no bhavan. Te, de, ete, all this rishayaha, learned scholars, vedam, the respective vedas, swam swam in their own interested matters. Vyasayan rendered anekada many shishyaha disciples, prashishyaha grand disciples, tachishyai great grand disciples, vedaha te the followers of the respective vedas, shakinaha different branches, abhavan thus became. Translation All these learned scholars in turn rendered their interested vedas. Unto their many disciples, grand disciples, and great grand disciples, 
and thus the respective branches of the followers of the Vedas came into being. Purport. The original source of knowledge is the Vedas. There are no branches of knowledge, either mundane or transcendental, which do not belong to the original text of the Vedas. They have simply been developed into different branches. They were originally rendered by great, respectable and learned professors. In other words, the Vedic knowledge, broken into different branches by different disciplic successions, has been distributed all over the world. No one, therefore, can claim independent knowledge beyond the Vedas. The sense of transcendental Bhakti Vedanta Parpar. Om Jnana Timiranda Sya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Kashyata Desha Tadine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, in this section of uh, Bhagavatam, we are seeing uh, the division that was made uh, by Yasadeva uh, in terms of the Vedic knowledge as how it was divided into uh, initially uh, one Veda into four, and then how he entrusted this knowledge upon his disciples, uh, and then how from there, it got branched out into many more and there were subdivisions created and uh, although there is not a complete explanation here there is little more explanation in 12th canto about the disciples and the grand disciples and great grand disciples and how each section of the vedas was further divided into smaller sections and in this way the knowledge was distributed across the world so now, it is also important to note why this is becoming more and more significant to know how the Vedas are being uh, divided. So, as we saw in the last couple of verses, as uh, Sutta Goswami starts to answer to the questions of Shaunaka Rishi, that the first uh, answer that Sutta Goswami comes up is to explain who Vyasadeva is and why his uh, presence was so important. And what was he doing in the early in the morning? So he, as the sun rose, took his morning ablution in the waters of Saraswati and sat alone to concentrate. Now, what was he concentrating? He was concentrating on the uh, anomalies in the millennium. He was seeing the unseen forces in the course of time, which are uh, very troublesome. He could see the people of Kali Yuga and how they are going to lead their life. So as we already saw that Bhautikanam cha bhavanam shakti risham cha tatkritam ashradhananam nisatvan durmedhan rishatya ayushaha durbhagam cha janan vikshya. So by his transcendental vision, Vedavyas, Vyasadeva could see that all the, the potency of the material things will reduce. People will have reduced strength. People will lose faith. There will be unfaithful people. And because of lack of goodness, uh, uh, people will be extremely impatient. And they will be less intelligent. Their lifespan will be reduced. And uh, they are unfortunate. So, Vyasadeva being able to see this through his divine vision, now he's envisioning Dadyo Hitam Amogadrik. So now he's meditating how to do welfare for all these people who are uh, being deficient or being lacking so many good things which otherwise in other yogas people were having. 
So from there, uh, the last verse we saw that Chatur Hotram Karma Shuddham. So he saw that uh, the Vedic knowledge is so important. And he saw that the Vedic knowledge mentions various kinds of sacrifices by which one's occupations can be purified, people's occupation can be purified. And now seeing the condition of the people in Kali Yuga, what uh, Vyasadeva took upon him, and to simplify the process, he divided the one Veda into four in order to expand them among men. So although it was all condensed in one Veda, Prabhupada says Yajur Veda, but because people are now, uh, the condition of the people in Kali Yuga is so deteriorating and deteriorates so much. So uh, in order to simplify the process, in order to simplify this understanding of the sacrifices and the implementation of them, uh, he divided the one Yajur Veda into four. And what are the four divisions that are mentioned in today's verse? Rig Yajuhu Sama Atharva. So the one Veda, which was uh, there earlier, uh, now was compiled by Vyasadeva in four different parts. And Prabhupada uh, is mentioning that Uddharitaha made into separate parts. So now the four divisions of Vedas have come upon. Uh, then Itihasa Puranamcha Panchama Veda Uchyate. So although these are the Vedas are said to be the original sources of knowledge, this is a very important word to pay attention to that Prabhupada is referring here that Vedas as the original sources of knowledge. The original sources of knowledge have been divided into four sections and Apart from that, there is Itihasa and Puranamcha. And these are also considered to be part of Vedic literature. And they are being addressed here as the fifth Veda. As we saw in the last uh, class, in the Purpur Prabhupada writes, in the Chandogya Upanishad, the Puranas and Mahabharata, generally known as histories, are mentioned as the fifth Veda. So this is also corroborated in Chandogya Upanishad that sometimes people think that Itihasa and Puranas are not so important as Vedas, but that is refuted again and again by Acharyas, by giving various uh, references and examples as how the Puranas and Itihasas are also very important. And then in the later verses, we see that how this knowledge was further propagated of the Vedas. So here it is being said that it was entrusted by Vyasadeva to different uh, leaders or different professors, teachers, who further carried this knowledge and gave it to their disciples and their disciples, and they made sub, sometimes some more, some more sub-branches, and this knowledge was further uh, propagated all around. So here it is being said, after the Vedas were divided into four divisions, Paila Rishi became the professor of the Rig Veda, Jaimini the professor of the Sama Veda, and Vaishampayana became the professor of Yajur Veda. So, and then in the next verse, Prabhupada mentions who is uh, in charge of the Atharva Veda. Sumantum Muni Angira. So, Sage Angira, uh, he became the uh, professor or the teacher of Atharva Veda. And then who was in charge of uh, the Itihasas and Puranas? It is being mentioned here, Roma Harsana. So, as we know, uh, he is none other than the father of Sutta Goswami, the speaker himself. So here, and therefore is referring Pitame, my father. Uh, so my father, Roma Harshana, was interested with the Puranas and historical record. And finally here it is being said that all these learned scholars in their turn render their interested Vedas unto their many disciples, grand disciples and great grand disciples and thus the respective branches of the followers of the Vedas came into being. So uh, it is uh, briefly mentioned in 12th Canto that how there are different branches that emerged from uh, these uh, disciples, Paila Rishi, um, Angira Muni. So they had their disciples and then they had many more disciples and so on and so forth. And in this process, Shaki Naha, there were further different branches were created out of this uh, primary knowledge. 
So basically, they've been categorized into further more categories so that people can take help of which category uh, they need the first or uh, they can easily access that portion of knowledge and make progressive advancement from there. So uh, <coughs> it has been said in this way, the Vedic knowledge which was compiled uh, was spread further by these disciples. Now, uh, interestingly, Prabhupada in this purport mentioned some very important point. Prabhupada again reinforces this point. The original source of knowledge is the Vedas. So Vedas, unlike the different sources of knowledge that we think, Prabhupada is saying here is the original source of knowledge. And Prabhupada is uh, further mentioning that there is no knowledge that does not belong to this text of Vedas. So that means both material and spiritual knowledge all are emanating or all are mentioned in the Vedas. Uh, and what has been later on done, they have been just developed into different branches. And that was done by these great respectable learned professors. Now, uh, it is very important uh, to see a little more about what Vedas. So Prabhupada gives a wonderful class, in fact, I think in London, and this is part of the introduction of uh, Sri Shopanishad where Prabhupada brings in uh, wonderful uh, concepts about what is Vedic knowledge and how it is to be received, why it is important, and so on and so forth. So let us look at some aspects. Well, Prabhupada is mentioning that this is the original source of knowledge. That means it must have great significance. Why Prabhupada is using this word twice uh, to say what Vedas are. And so let us look at what Vedas are. So Prabhupada writes, in, uh, explains in that class, that the Sanskrit verbal root of Veda can be interpreted variously, but the purport is finally one. Veda means knowledge. So Prabhupada is saying there are different ways you could interpret this meaning, but the fundamental meaning of the word Veda means knowledge. Any knowledge you accept is Veda, but the teachings of the Vedas are the original knowledge. Because the original knowledge comprises of everything, and therefore, any knowledge that is accepted is actually Veda. So that is the first point Prabhupada is making. And Prabhupada, in another place, mentions, uh, I think maybe even in this purport, okay, the next section also we can see some of those points regarding what Vedas are. So Prabhupada further explains that the Vedas are not compilations of human knowledge. Vedic knowledge comes from the spiritual world, from Lord Krishna. Another name for the Vedas is Shruti. Shruti refers to that knowledge which is acquired by hearing. It is not experimental knowledge. So one important point to note about Vedic knowledge is that there are different categories of knowledge. The knowledge that we acquire by direct perception, Pratyaksha, Paroksha by, from some authority, then Aparoksha by some realization. Then there is Prabhupada says the knowledge of Adokshaja which is beyond the senses. So the Vedic knowledge uh, the Ved Vedas, uh, in fact, provide knowledge not only about what is perceivable, but also the knowledge of Adokshaja, what lies beyond our sense perception. So now it is very important to note, Prabhupada is mentioning here, that it is not experimental knowledge. So there is a certain realm of knowledge that we cannot acquire by any kind of experimentation. Prabhupada gives various examples for this. One simple example Prabhupada gives is that of soul. Prabhupada says, your soul, I am soul, but I cannot see my soul and neither <laughs> I can see your soul. This is beyond the realm of experimental knowledge. And therefore, that knowledge is also contained in the Vedas, which you cannot otherwise acquire by any other means. And uh, Prabhupada also mentions in Chaitanya Charita Amrita that Vishnu, who is beyond the material world, which is also accepted by Shankaracharya. Narayana Paravyaktat. So because he is transcendental to the material nature, the living entity who is equipped with this material senses cannot perceive or understand the tattva of Vishnu. So neither the living entity can understand one's own soul or see one's soul by experimental knowledge and forget about understanding knowledge that lies beyond the material creation which is impossible for the living entity to access in any ways. So this knowledge is of another category, which cannot be obtained by experimental knowledge. 
and therefore the only means that is being recommended here is to hear shruti because that is acquired by hearing the only way to acquire this knowledge is by hearing so prabhupada is further giving another example of this kind of knowledge which is not obtained by experimental way shruti is considered to be like a mother we take so much knowledge from our mother for example if you want to know who your father is you who can answer you your mother <laughs> if the mother says here is your father you have to accept it it is not possible to experiment to find out whether he is your father similarly if you want some if you want to know something beyond your experience beyond your experimental knowledge beyond the activities of the senses then you have to accept the vedas there is no question of experimenting it has already been experimented it is already settled the version of the mother for instance has to be accepted as truth there is no other way so this is a very important point that vedas contain knowledge which is beyond experimental knowledge and here prabhupada is giving the example of a child he can never know by any experimental means he cannot ascertain for sure that who the father is until unless the mother ascertains who the father is so similarly the knowledge which is beyond our scope we do not have any direct source to get that we have to depend upon shruti or hearing and here prabhupada is clearly mentioning that to get to the knowledge which is beyond experiment which is beyond your senses one must accept the authority of the vedas and prabhupada is further mentioning that it is already experimented and settled uh, so as we can also see prabhupada is mentioning that the vedas were interested uh, to learn scholars to uh, all the great devotees and scholars so they were also well educated that's not that they have accepted this randomly they have analyzed they have given all the descriptions so in fact the vedic literatures have all kinds of reasoning also provided the nyaya shastra as we see in the bhagavata purana there is clear description given even through logic and uh, reasoning as why these are to be accepted as the ultimate truth and so it is very important to know the importance and in fact even more important is to understand what vedas are what kind of knowledge are they providing because until unless we do not know that we will be confused we will be thinking people all speak oh you are a hindu you must be knowing vedas yes we know vedas but what is veda something forecast system something else something else all religions are same all gods there are 33 crore gods there are different kinds of understanding of what constitutes vedas or what are the knowledge but only when we read through uh, the teachings of a bona fide acharya like shila prabhupad we can get the essence the saram of the vedas of what the knowledge is present in this and how do we understand them so this is about the vedas and then it is also important to note about what are itihasas and puranas so <clears throat> itihasa the word itihasa refers to history and prabhupad says purana means old history so itihasa and puranas <coughs> so prabhupad explains especially in uh, the past time of ajamila a greater in, in greater detail why puranas and itihasas are important and what are they actually explaining so prabhupad says that these are not mythology or these are not fiction these are not some imaginary Im- imaginary stories but rather these are the examples of first class men whom we should follow so prabhupad <coughs> explains <coughs> uh, that these incidences which are being mentioned why are they mentioned because they are very very beneficial they are very very beneficial it is not that any historical incident is mentioned no only incidences which are of great spiritual value which are of great uh, interest for any common man to follow and thereby make the life perfect so sometimes people say it is not mentioned in chrono- chronological order it is not mentioned in certain sequence maybe there is certain jump of one time to another time but prabhupad mentions what is more important to note here is to note that because example is better than precept the puranas and itihasas give various examples for people to easily understand what is being already mentioned in the vedas 
so in in other words <clears throat> Prabhupada says that these activities of the first class men can easily help a common man to appreciate what constitutes the uh, principles of Vedas or what the Vedic mantras are teaching and it is also important to note that uh, Jiva Goswami in Tattva Sandarbha also establishes very systematically how Itihasas and Puranas are a part of Vedic literature. So sometimes people do not accept, especially in the modern Indology and so-called scholars, they do not accept all of them to be part of Vedic literature. They say these all literatures have come from different parts, different people have compiled at different points of time, and they give a timeline to all these different things, and they don't agree upon that they all come under the category of Vedic literatures. But it is important to see that <clears throat> Uh, how uh, Jiva Goswami in Tattva Sandarbha and also with reference to other uh, uh, Upanishads uh, explain that uh, Puranas and Ithyasas are equally important or even in some cases more important than the Vedas itself. So uh, Jiva Goswami mentions that the knowledge uh, or the evidences that we get from Ithyasas and Puranas are as good as uh, the evidences from the Vedas. So in this way, it is important to note that all these branches of knowledge are very, very important. Uh, and why they are important, we will see them very soon. So the next aspect that we can see is that the Vedas are also known as Trayveda or Trayvidya. So basically, they contain these three aspects of knowledge, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, and Upasana Kanda. So karma kanda means how do I adjust my material living in such a way that I can be have better material comforts. So Vedas are vast branch of knowledge as we see they contain both the mundane and the transcendental knowledge. That means they categorize and also being said as the original source of, source of knowledge, they contain everything. So they cater for all sections of people. So karma kanda, people who want to have material benefits, who want to lead a material uh, materially comfortable life. So Prabhupada says, uh, there are different activities which are mentioned. Now you do this, you do that, then you will, in your next life, you will go to heavenly planets or enjoy that way. Or, uh, <coughs> or you could have Janma, Ishwarya, Shruta, Shribi. In next life, you can have good birth. You could have a lot of opulence and good education and so on and so forth. So these are possible to obtain by uh, following this process of karma kanda. So, and then there's also jnana kanda, that is uh, to uh, understand philosophically as what is what and things like that. And then there is upasana kanda, where there's also the mention of the worship of demigods. So, there are different aspects of knowledge that's mentioned. And there is a small portion of Vedas which also talk about uh, the Supreme Lord and his worship. So, but because it is uh, <clears throat> because there is so much of information, it is quite possible to be lost in understanding what the Vedas are actually speaking. What is the essence of the Vedas? What is the purpose of the Vedas? It is very easy to be uh, missed out. And, and therefore, it is very important to note uh, even more further as why Vedas are important and what is their purpose. So, we will look into couple of aspects of why Vedic literatures are important and then uh, we will eventually come towards the point of uh, what is the purpose of Vedas and how it is to be understood. So um, as uh, we saw even in the last class uh, there is this verse from 6th canto 1st chapter 40th verse where uh, the Yamadutas are talking about what is dharma and adharma and they are saying Shushrushuma, they are hearing, <coughs> they have heard. <coughs> so they say, <coughs> sorry. So they explain um, the reason as why Vedic literatures are important. And one of the uh, points that they say, is that Vedo Narayana Shakshat. So, because uh, the Vedas are emanating from the breathing of Lord Narayana, uh, so Prabhupada explains that, that uh, 
the Lord is absolute and Lord's name form uh, paraphernalia activities and even his words or his teachings are also absolute. And therefore, these Vedic literatures, which are coming from the Supreme Absolute, are also absolute. That means there is no difference. And Prabhupada also gives further examples to explain that Saksha Dharitvena Samastha Shastriya. So Prabhupada also mentions that anything uh, like a pure devotee who is completely engaged in the service of the Supreme Person, uh, uh, who is very dear to the Supreme Lord, is also absolute. And therefore, they carry the absolute value. And therefore, they are not to be, con uh, to be seen from a mundane, uh, relativistic perspective of uh, something created by someone. No. So Prabhupada uh, clearly states that it is not to be seen uh, as a mundane creation that Vyasadeva compiled. No, these are existing for a long time. In fact, from the time of beginning of the creation. And it is only compiled very recently. But that does not mean that this knowledge was not present. So like some of the religions which are like 1000 years, 2000 years, they may say that this was created now. And this knowledge is coming from now. Before that, they were something else. But Prabhupada clearly explains that this is absolute. Sanatana, this knowledge is present from the very beginning. And it is not a mundane creation. And therefore, this is, these are very important. The, the, it is infallible. Because it is coming from the infallible, it is infallible. And therefore, this knowledge is being, ab <coughs> being absolute is very, very important. And the second point that to note is why Vedic literatures are so important are because they elucidate dharma. So the Yamadutas in this verse they state that what is mentioned in Vedas constitute dharma and anything beyond that is a dharma. So it's, it's a very clear statement that what is dharma and what is dharma to understand? They say whatever is mentioned in the Vedic literatures is dharma and anything else apart from that is not dharma. Now people may say, why is it important to know dharma? So just like we live in a society and there are certain governmental laws and if you do not know the governmental laws, we'll be always in anxiety. Because any act that we do could be right or wrong. And when it is wrong, we are punished by the city or the government in different ways. They would impose fine, or if it is too terrible of an offense that an act that we did without knowing or knowing, we would be put in jail, or sometimes it could lead to even greater punishment. Therefore, usually we all get acquainted with the laws of the city or the place where we go so that we do not end up in any trouble. Similarly, if we do not know what is dharma, so Prabhupada explains this dharma in two ways. One, as the codes of religion or the laws given by God. In another way, Prabhupada explains this to be the constitutional position. In both ways, Prabhupada says, if we do not know these things as what is my constitutional position, what are the laws of the world? What are the laws of material nature? What are the uh, laws given by the God? What are the codes? If I do not know them, then I cannot lead a proper life. So this, especially this dharma of knowing what is the constitutional position is so difficult, it, it cannot be ascertained. Because I am so tiny uh, and limited, and for me to ascertain something absolutely is not possible because of my limited knowledge, limited perceptions. So uh, it is important to make sure that if we want to understand what is dharma, what is constitutional position, what is what, the only way to acquire that knowledge is through Vedic literatures. Otherwise, we'll be always confused. Like yesterday, I was talking to one student at Harvard, and he has got two very good jobs, very good offers. Lots of money they are paying him. Um, maybe at least uh, one and a half, two times the payment that a normal student would get. But he's so confused, he's so perplexed. I should go here, I should go there. Why? Because I, if I go here, I'll become a good engineering, uh, I'll get engineering skills. If I go here, I'll get sales skill. But uh, where should I go? What should I do? So fully confused. The reason being why there is confusion because 
we are not able to understand what is life, what is dharma, what is our ultimate goal of life, because that is not fixed. The all other things become very perplexing, very confusing to decide between anything that we want to make in life. So until unless that Vyavsayatmika buddhihi, that resolute purpose to be established in Krishna consciousness does not arise, is not fixed, then there is confusion in life, there is um, impatience to go towards various things which appear attractive in the material world happens. And uh, thirdly, Vedic literature are also important because the Acharyas, especially Rupa Goswami has mentioned, and even uh, Srila Prabhupada and other Acharyas have followed this, that Shruti Smritir Puranadi Pancharatrika Vidim Vina Aikantiki Harer Bhaktir Utpat Yeva Kalpate if the devotional service that is rendered to the Supreme Personality of God, Lord Sri Krishna, if it is not based upon Shruti, the Vedas, Smriti, that is the uh, Mahabharata or the Bhagavad Gita, Purana, the, even the Puranas, if it is not based, if the devotional service is not uh, referred to these authentic scriptures, then they can lead havoc. Utpatyeva Kalpate. So even in the name of devotional service, there can be a havoc or there can be discrepancies, there can be a loss of the purpose of devotional service. Therefore, devotional service is also not to be performed whimsically. And it is very important to note, for this very reason, all the Goswamis have written extensive literatures and this, for this very reason, Srila Prabhupada has written this, uh, all the books. So that the practices are based upon uh, the references of Shruti, Smriti, Puranadi. Without reference, the mental speculation of the individual will create havoc because there is misinterpretation of what is the actual truth, the actual purpose of the Vedas, the actual purpose of the devotional service. And today, this has become a big problem in various religions. And the term that is used is practice religion and ideal religion. So the ideal religion is according to what the scriptures are saying and the practice religion is what people are practicing today. And because the practice religion is of hundreds and millions of branches, people are confused as what is actual religion. And because there is no one to base clearly on what we should decide which is right and which is not, the religions across the world are confused. People in practicing various religions are confused. There is no proper authority to base upon. And each and every leader in a smaller society creates his own understanding and his own following. And there is more and more conflict. And especially this can be seen in other religions even more. Even in terms of Hinduism today, we can see there are so many branches, sub-branches, and not knowing uh, the ultimate purpose, not knowing the fundamentals very clearly, not being based upon the Vedic literatures, there is a havoc, there is a confusion, there is um, misdirection and misguidance taking place in the name of religion. So it is to be noted, therefore, one must be acquainted with the teachings of the Vedic literature so that we are not misguided. And uh, we should also note here that uh, the Vedic literature is being so vast our uh, acharyas have simplified them so that we can get all the cream and the essence and whatever is necessary for us to follow. And therefore, the contribution of the six course of Amish and Srila Prabhupada is very, very important. And in, in this regard, uh, uh, in fact, I think it was Tamil Krishna Goswami Maharaj and one more devotee along with Srila Prabhupada were traveling in a car. And I think they came across an article which said, some people in New York where they were eating um, human fetuses. Uh, so, and they informed Prabhupada about this activity where people are eating this kind of things. Uh, so they thought Prabhupada would chastise or scold or something. But then Prabhupada says that people in Kaliuga are yet to realize that the human flesh is the most tastiest one. And time will come when people will recognize this and they will in indulge in this. So immediately the other two devotees were shocked. 
how did Prabhupada know this? How did Prabhupada could understand what is the taste of the human flesh is and how it is the tastiest? And then that devotee mentions in that biography that Prabhupada actually knows future. He knows present. He knows past. And because as we see, uh, as it is mentioned that uh, in the previous verses that Vyasadeva could see because of his transcendental vision, because he's seeing through the scriptures and he's also liberated. And similarly, Srila Prabhupada being liberated, he's able to see the future. And then the devotee mentions, Srila Prabhupada, that's why your books are so important. Because you are able to see the future and the present, you are able to present the message according to the present and the future. And Prabhupada says, yes. That's why every word that I've written uh, is, to, uh, is, is, is in such a way that these books will be the law books for the next 10,000 years. So uh, this is also important to note that this knowledge uh, is, as it is important, it is also important to receive it from the right person in the right way. And this is the expertise of an Acharya who could make it so easy to understand in, with respect to time, place and circumstance, the essence of all the knowledge. So Krishna also mentions, uh, in fact, sorry, Prabhupada mentions in the introduction of Bhagavad Gita, this verse, Maya Mukta Jiver Nahi Swataha Krishna Gnan, Jivera Kripaya Kaila Krishna Veda Puran. So why did Lord Krishna give this knowledge? Uh, why did Krishna uh, give this uh, Veda Puran? Because Maya Mukta Jiver Nahi Swataha Krishna Gyan. So the living entities, Jiva, so the Jiva Sakti is basically prone to either be in touch with the spiritual energy or the material energy. And Maya Mukta Jiver, so the living entity who is conditioned the material world, Nahi Swataha Krishna Gyan, the living entity who is conditioned, who is always thinking I am matter, who is identifying with the matter, being associated with the matter, is not able to see once on constitutional position, who am I, and neither able to see anything beyond, uh, especially about Krishna Gyan, who is Lord Krishna. So, how would one ever come out of this conditioning? Jivere Kripaya Kaila Krishna Veda Puran. So, so, in order to facilitate people to get the benefit of uh, coming out of this illusory cycle. To come out of this illusory condition life, Krishna has given this Vedic knowledge. And we'll see a little more about this in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, it is very wonderfully described. Uh, so in addition to this verse uh, where it is mentioned, Maya Mukta Rajiva, there are a series of verses which talk about the importance of Vedic knowledge. And uh, it is very beautifully described as, yes. So, yes. So it is being said that the forgetful conditioned soul is educated by Krishna through the Vedic literatures, the realized spiritual master and the super soul. Through this, he can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead as he is. And he can understand that Lord Krishna is his eternal master and deliverer from the clutches of Maya. In this way, one can acquire real knowledge of his conditioned life and come to understand how to attain liberation. So basically what is being said here is that uh, Krishna uh, is educating the living entity through Vedic literatures, the realized spiritual master and the super soul. Shastra Guru Atma, in the form of the Super Soul, the Vedic literatures and the uh, spiritual master, one is being awakened to one's real position. And it is by these means that one can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead as He is. And one can also understand this distinction that I am not equal to Lord Narayana, Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. There is a category 
categorical difference between the Lord and me. I am an eternal servant. Mamai Vamsu Jiva Bhuta Jiva Loka Sanatana. I am eternally a part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, and also my eternal occupation is to be servant of the Lord. Unlike the Mayavadis who confuse or who uh, misunderstand or misinterpret uh, this understanding of the real position of the living entity, that, oh, um, I can become God. No. So that knowledge is not true. And here uh, it is being said that the Ved Veda Shastra Kahe Samanda Abhidaya Prayojana, Krishna Prapya Samanda Bhakti Prapya Sadhana. The Vedic literature just gives information about the living entity's eternal relationship with Krishna, which is called Samanda, the living entity's understanding of his relationship. This relationship and acting accordingly is called Abhidaya, getting home back to Godhead is the ultimate goal of life and is called Prayojana. So basically, uh, the all the Vedic literatures can be classified to carry these three kinds of knowledge. The Samanda or understanding our relationship with the Supreme Lord, Abhideya, uh, the activities that one needs to carry out when one understands what is my relationship with the Supreme Lord. And then finally the Prayojana or the ultimate goal that is to be achieved by the performance of the activities. So it is being said that uh, by performing the Abhidaya or the activities which are prescribed as mentioned in the Vedic literatures, one gradually elevates oneself. So uh, it is important to note uh, that uh, the various sections in the Vedic literatures are given so as to help one to elevate oneself from the lower modes to the higher modes and then eventually come to the state of self-realization and understand who Krishna is and then engage in devotional service and then perfect that devotional service and attain the highest prayojana. So this is, uh, in short, the various contents of the uh, Vedic literatures can be summarized as. Now, uh, the problem here is that there is a vast section of knowledge that is being provided just for one to elevate from a very, very uh, lower state of consciousness to come to a state of goodness. So sometimes people get confused in this ritualistic uh, performances or the uh, subsidiary activities that are mentioned in the Vedic literatures as the sum and substance and miss out the higher purpose or the ultimate goal that which um, the Vedas are referring to. As we can see, even Bhagavad Gita, Krishna clearly mentions uh, what is the goal of the Vedas. Vedesha sarver ahame o so to know Krishna is the goal. So people most of the time who are Vedavada Ratas, uh, they miss out this goal, purpose of the Vedas. And uh, so it is important to note what is the role of the Vedic literature. So as we saw in this uh, next verse to this, that uh, it is through the Vedic knowledge, the spiritual master and the super soul, one comes to knowledge of Krishna. And therefore, it is very important to take help of the literatures <coughs> and be established in understanding Krishna, our relationship. By understanding that, our activities will become firm. Nishta, Naishtiki. So, until unless to become Naishtiki, we need to take advantage of all of them. And further, although I'll very briefly touch upon this, how Vedic literatures are to be received, uh, because the human being is to commit this four kinds, uh, uh, has four kinds of defects, sure to commit mistakes, invariably illusion, tendency to cheat others, limited by imperfect senses, one has to receive this knowledge from a liberated, uh, perfect uh, devotee of the Lord and uh, through the parampara system. So this is a very important principle. Although there is Vedic literatures, uh, there's uh, the great glories of the Vedic literatures, it is to be taken, it is to be understood from a pure devotee. Otherwise, as we saw even in the last class, uh, the milk touched by uh, the fangs of the snake is poisoned, so it becomes poison. The milk is good, but now it is touched with the uh, 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 snake. So no more it is uh, appropriate, no more it is good. So similarly, it is important to note, although Vedic literatures are all glorious, 
Until and unless we do not hear in the disciplic parampara system, we are sure to be deviated and get confused. And finally, Srila Prabhupada gives this wonderful example to illustrate the purpose of Vedas. And, um, and this is a beautiful example with which I will close. So Prabhupada says, imagine if someone from New York want to go to London. Prabhupada says the best place to go to London from New York is to go to the airport. Let's say there is a person who is in the airport and the reason that's the best place because he can easily cross over the ocean by taking a flight and reach to the other side. Now, imagine a person who goes all the way to the airport but now misses the flight. So Prabhupada says, a person who missed the flight in the airport and any other person in New York are at the same distance from London and there is no difference between them. So Prabhupada is giving this analogy for one to understand that even though one may take various aspects of Vedic literatures and make progress towards the mode of goodness or towards higher consciousness compared to the lower stages, but until and unless one does not take to devotional service, until and unless one does not come to understand Krishna, he is still at the same distance. So what Prabhupada is trying to make here is that through Vedic literatures, one has to come to understand Krishna. One has to, so the, the various subsidiary or the different sections, preliminary sections of the Vedic literatures are meant to elevate one, but the goal is to be clear that I should take the flight and go to London. So similarly, the goal is to understand Krishna. If I'm not understanding Krishna, that means there is something in the name of Vedic literatures I'm doing, but that is not sufficient, that is not enough, that is not the goal. So uh, one must not be misled when someone can recite the Vedic verses very nicely, can give some explanations. The question is, how much does one understand what is who is Krishna, what is one's relationship with Krishna, and how much is one engaged in the activities uh, which one must be doing, because that is what it means to take the flight. What it means to take flight is to render devotional service, and then we have to grow from there to become inoffensive in our devotional service, to purify our devotional service. The, we carry jnana uh, and karma mishra bhakti, so that needs to be further purified. So uh, it is very important to note that even we have to measure our journey of whether we are taking a flight or we are coming to the airport and just staying there and watching something else. So even in devotional life, if we, we can miss the flight. It's quite possible. Uh, that means in devotional service, the flight is delayed uh, because devotional service is eternal. Uh, so we can delay our flight. But on the other hand, if we follow the instructions, um, uh, Shruti, Smriti, Purana, Adi, Pancharatrika, Vidhimbina. So if we take to the instructions given by the Acharyas, by the Vedic literatures, as summarized by Srila Prabhupada in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, which are the essence of all these Vedic literatures, then we will be convinced that we should go to the airport and we will be also convinced to sit in the plane and reach to our destination. So, uh, uh, the point that is important here is to note that all this is being done by the Vyasa Deva so that people of this age can easily appreciate this knowledge. And we have to also see how merciful uh, all the Acharyas and Srila Prabhupada have been so as to establish this knowledge firmly uh, so that we are convinced with the references. And this is a great important task that without references, it is, especially in Kali Yuga, because of mental speculation, people just misread, misinterpret, and dilute the real principles of religion. And therefore, it is very, very uh, important that without these literatures, that's why Prabhupada emphasized that his books are the basis. The reason being, there will be people who will be diverting, people who will be creating, concocting, adding, subtracting, and therefore Prabhupada at different points wanted devotees not to add or subtract, but to firmly follow uh, the instructions, firmly fo base their practices and 
everything, even the management, based upon his books. Prabhupada said, all that I have to say is mention the books. You read them and you'll understand them. So, uh, uh, this literature is given by Srila Prabhupada are also very important. We must pray and become honest to take advantage of these instructions, which will help us to catch the flight and reach the highest destination. With that, I'll stop and see if there are any questions or comments. Mentioned that one of them, Angi Risha, was mentioned in the purpose that he was following Atharva Veda very rigidly, mm -hmm. very strictly. Mm -hmm. But these were all, uh, is it to be understood that all these Rishis were, were disciples of Vyasadeva because they were directly disciples of Vyasadeva, that they were pure devotees? And so, why are they following this one side of the Vedas like that? No, so they are not to be considered as pure devotees. And that's no, Omar Shana was not a pure devotee. He was so, so, none of them are, and that's the reason why only. Sukadeva Goswami was given the Bhagavata Purana to uh, expound further. So because none of them were free from all material uh, tinge or contamination, so they were not given uh, the, pro uh, the, the propagation of Bhagavata Dharma. So Bhagavata Dharma starts from Sukadeva Goswami because he was completely free from uh, all the material effects or tinges. If there are no questions or comments, we'll stop here and join in the evening for the last day of Kartik festivities. Thank you all for joining. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Kranti Raj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Nitai Gaur Premanandi. Thank you all for joining. Hare Krishna.